So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome to my Galaxy S20 Ultra full review. Now I actually waited to get the March patch for this phone for the camera because there was some auto focusing issues with the camera before I did the review. But we're gonna discuss if this phone is really worth its staggering price point of $1399. Now I emphasize staggering because that's quite a bit compared to you know previous Samsung phones and even the S20 line and the S20 Plus line. So you're gonna pay the premium to get the Galaxy S20 Ultra and it does give you quite a lot of premium stuff. We'll discuss it here. We're gonna begin with the key specs that matter with this phone. First of all, with the Galaxy S20 Ultra, you are getting yourself a 6.9 inch dynamic AMOLED display. Now that's almost seven inches. If you think about how big a lot of tablets are, that's a big display right there. So if you're looking for the most display you can get in a phone, the S20 Ultra is offering you that. 3200 by 1440p res is gonna give you also a very good resolution on the display. And this thing has a 108 megapixel camera on the rear that allows you to zoom up to 100x. Now, yes, it's digital, but it can be useful for some memories, maybe not for posting on social media, but still useful for some memories. Now, this does have 12 gigabytes of RAM. You can also get 16 gigs of RAM with this phone, depending if you go with the more storage version and 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Okay, so let's talk about the body of the Galaxy S20 Ultra. Now, first of all, you can see that the display is relatively flat compared to past Samsung phones, like the Samsung Galaxy S phone. So if you've been wanting a flat phone, you'll definitely uh, like this a little more. If you're used to like the Galaxy S10+, Plus, S9+, Plus, those phones had a little bit more curved panels. This one slightly on the edges, but not bad. Now there is a camera bump on the rear of this phone that's massive. So you will be needing a case if you want that to go flush with the body or else it will definitely rock on a table as you can see right there. Definitely gonna rock on a table with this one. Now, very tall 6.9 inch display means that if you don't have big hands, you're gonna have trouble handling this one without two. So definitely a two-handed phone for most people or at least hold it with one hand and use your other hand to swipe through and do things. As Samsung does have a one-handed mode, but that's still gonna be a little bit of a juggle with this size of a device. It's just a big device. Now at 222 grams, this phone for its size doesn't feel that heavy, but it's still got some weight to it. So it's it's not a it's not a light phone. It's got some weight. It's just for its size, I think it's a pretty good weight. Now IP68 dust and water resistance on both. So if you do splash on here, you should be fine with the S20 Ultra. And so you can see on the left side, there's really nothing on this phone to speak of. On the top, we do have the SIM card tray right here as well as a microphone hole right there. And we also do have, you know, SD card storage slot in there as well. Now, on the right side of this phone, I do like that they brought the power button a little bit further down in prior Samsung Galaxies. That's good because at least you can still reach that power button right there. Now, it's not quite as large as what you'll see on something like an iPhone, but it's still right there. Now you can see you do have volume rockers up here as well. Some people like this. I kind of like this because I like that it's both on the same side. Some people think it's a little bit annoying. You can't do a screenshot quite as easy. You got to kind of do this. Whereas before you can just hold, you know, the button over here and a button on this side, and then you'll be able to quickly take your screenshot. But you do have the swipe to screenshot on Samsung. So that's pretty easy as well. And again, we do have our speaker grill down there with a USB-C port, another microphone for talking. And there is an integrated, you know, audio up here in the top as well. Overall, this body is massive. Some could say it's beautiful. I think it's rather conservative and I don't think it's Samsung's like most flashy work they've done. But I think for the person who just wants it sleek, professional and clean, uh, this is a really good phone. Overall, you're not really buying this phone for the design. I think you're buying it for some other factors. We'll begin with one of them and that's the display. This display at 6.9 inches is not only large, but it can do a high refresh rate at 120 hertz. Now this is not unique to the S20 Ultra. It's also on the S20 Plus and S20, so you don't have to pay this much to get this, but having it on this large of a display with 120 hertz is such a joy to use. Now you cannot put it in the you know QHD just yet. Maybe Samsung will do an update where you can do QHD and 120 hertz, but it's not here right now. So you have to be in 1080 to do QHD uh, resolution. However, I don't really find the need to have it in WQHD that often. Uh, I, I would rather trade to have the super smooth display as it does really give this phone a feel like no other. This is the smoothest phone you can buy right now in terms of display hardware. It just is. Now, I'm not saying Samsung software is the smoothest on the market, but 
because of its hardware, it's up there with the best. Only thing I think comes close to this are things like the ROG phone, those gaming phones with those super high Hertz displays, Razer phone like this as well. And of course, like previous Samsung phones, you still have the ability to go ahead and tweak that display a little bit more. So if we go over here to screen mode, you have vivid. If we go into vivid, you can change the white balance of this display. So lots of display functionality here for the Samsung phone. And obviously watching videos is a joy on here. Yes, you do have a little punch hole up there, but it got even smaller. It's really not a nuisance. You can see bezels very thin, some of the thinnest you're gonna get on the market. And pinching the zooming, if you pinch it back down, you do have no interruptions whatsoever. This display also supports HDR10+, plus, so yeah, and again, and having this ability to bring this video down and just kind of multitask while you're watching a video is a pretty unique feature that's awesome for this phone. Also, that's not the only thing. If we go over here into settings and we click always on display, this phone has an always on display like most Samsung phones, so you definitely have the ability to show your notifications, what happened to turn your phone on all the time. So you can turn on tap to show, you can put on show always, you can schedule your always on display if you're worried about battery overnight, you have different clock styles with this display. So, I mean, this thing is the display king right now. All right, so let's move on to the operating system. So of course we do have the One UI 2.1 on here and it did get an update just a couple of days ago for the camera. I'm on this patch right here, the G988U1UEU1ATCH, a really long number, but still, this is uh, the latest with the new focusing update for you know the camera on the S20 Ultra having those issues. I really wanted to wait for that before I did the full review. Now, if we go into settings here, you're gonna see, if we scroll down to, let me see, advanced features here, there's so much on this phone you could do. You could change a side key. You have different accessory features. I mean, direct share, reduce animations, motions and gestures. I mean, this thing is loaded with features. I think Samsung has did a good job of reducing a lot of the junk they used to have on there, but there's still a lot with this phone and there's still a lot you need to learn if you don't know how to use a Samsung Galaxy phone. And there's a lot up here. I don't think it's the most simple phone on the market, but it's the phone for people who want everything in their phone. You have the focus mode from Android 10, you have Dolby Atmos features, you have a kids mode, you have a secret folder on here, you can use secure folder, you have NFC on board, you have a link to Windows, you just link it to your Windows computer and you could start text messaging people with your phone screen right on your laptop. Reverse wireless sharing, DeX mode is available for this as well with just a simple cord right into a monitor. The ability to do things like pop view on this phone. So if I just go over here, I've talked about this multiple times in Samsung videos before. It's a key separator between this and a lot of other phones on the market is that it can just do these multitasking things. So you can see right here, having two apps at one time. Now it seems like it's a little bit cramped sometimes. What I have to do is lower the DPI scaling and you'll have more space. You also have the ability to go ahead and put this thing into landscape mode, use it like a little tablet. If there's a feature you could think of for the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, it's probably here on board. There's not a lot that this phone doesn't offer. And one thing I really like is that Say you wanna put some apps on the home screen. It's really simple. All you have to do is grab one. Let's go ahead and select items. This is kind of for all the Samsung phones, but you can just grab a bunch and just say, let's go ahead and create folder. We can create a folder inside the folder, but also if I take these right here, let me select them one more time, select items. You can go ahead and grab these like so, bring it out of the folder. Let's bring it out of the folder and let's bring it home. Boom, all your apps in one place. It's that simple. I mean, stuff like this just makes this a customizing beast over here. And not only that, if I take these out of here, let's go to themes really quickly. You have the entire Galaxy theme store. We have wallpapers everywhere, icons everywhere. We have themes everywhere. I mean, this phone is unique to you if you wanna take the time to customize it. So you're like, why are you using those, why are you using those navigation keys? That's because I wanted to wait to show you the gestures on board here. So you have full screen gestures. In addition to that, you can use the Android ones from like the Google Pixel, or you can use Samsung's gestures, either one you want. I prefer the Google version. You can go hold up like that, or you can use this. And then when you go into an application, like weather, for example, you can just go back like that, or you can go from the side to get to your multitasking. So lots of customization, lots of different ways to use this phone. It can be overwhelming sometimes, but I think for the person who's gonna buy this phone, it's not going to be. And remember, that stuff is there for you. You don't have to use it. You can just use this phone however you want. And if we go into home screen settings over here, 
you can see that we have the ability to swipe down for the notification panel. So you can just swipe down your notification panel if it's too big. And if we go to home screen settings once again, you can make this more like an iPhone if you don't want have an app drawer. So it's really up to you. This is the total customized phone. Just do what you want. The only thing is, is it's not really, the only thing is, is you're still gonna have the One UI UX on here. So you might not like that. It's really up to you. I gotta say though, overall, from the software standpoint, this is like giving you almost every feature you could think of. Okay guys, so here we are with the performance. How does this thing perform in the day to day? And as you can see, just in this quick example, everything is fast. Like there's, there's zero lag. It's also not only fast, it's extremely smooth, and it's already been beaten on some other phones that are on the market right now. So yeah, you would expect for 1400 to get a top dog performer, and guess what? You're getting a top dog performer. So don't don't even think twice. When, you, when you're like, you know what, Nick? I'm looking for the fastest phone for money right now. This is it. This is gonna be it. No really different from the, you know, the S20, S20 Plus, but still, it's still the fastest phone you can get. 16 gigs of RAM available on this beast. Snapdragon 865, yes. Now, OnePlus with their lighter software, I do think is going to make this phone, uh, it's gonna look a little faster, I think, because their animations are usually quicker. We'll see what happens, but right now, Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra sitting on the top of the hill. A quick warning before we go any further, if you don't want your eardrums to explode, out of your head, you might want to turn your volume down right now because we're going to check out the audio here. Side of that, and uh, you can see down here just UPC codes opening it up. And of course, we do have our papers inside. Let me get this razor out of the way because you know, we're not talking about razors in this video, are we? You can see the future now. You can cover at the bottom, you can pause and read that card. For You're not going to stop it because it's a dual system, so very loud performance, especially on the ringers. Let me go ahead and show you the ringers. Okay, so yeah, this phone is loud. Let's just put it that way. It's probably the loudest phone I've heard in a while. So if you're looking for an extremely loud speaker phone, <laughs> this one's it. This one's gonna blast at nighttime if you're trying to play a video or something. People are gonna be like, can you please turn that down? And not only that, you do have the ability to take this thing over into Dolby Atmos and raise it more to whatever like liking you have. Movie, music, voice, you pick. It's really up to you. Now. Let's move on to battery. A 5,000 milliamp hour battery. When I first got this phone, the first few days, I was like, why is this thing draining so quickly? And then I realized that it's just kind of working itself in. It's optimizing, kind of learning how you use the phone. And this thing has been crazy good ever since then. This thing can get me a day, day and a half easy. And I'm talking heavy use. Don't use it heavy, it can get you two days. So this phone is a beast in battery life. You don't have to worry whatsoever i'm getting like seven or eight hours screen time maybe even more it's insane the battery life on this phone now what's not insane is the standby time it still does creep down that's typical samsung creep in the standby it's annoying you can go to bed with 100 percent wake up with 97 96 you're like what the heck i didn't even touch the phone yes that will happen on this phone but in terms of actual usage using it day to day you're not gonna get out of work and be like i have no battery life you're gonna be just fine and because it uses USB-C. This thing charges like a monster, like it's super quick. So battery, rest assured, it's gonna be fine. You're gonna be actually quite happy with this. Just don't be afraid when you first get it the first couple of days, it's not the greatest. It does learn how you use it and it gets way better. And yes, if you are using this thing in that whole, you know, 120 Hertz mode, it does trade off maybe like an hour or so battery life. I have noticed that, but I'm willing to make that trade off because 120 hertz is just butter. Like it is smooth as butter. And like, I don't wanna go back to the 60 hertz. So I'm leaving it there, I'll sacrifice the battery life. Okay, so talking about this camera, this thing is loaded. I mean, there is a novel on how much, no, there's not, but there, I'm joking. There's a huge amount of specs on here. It's like reading a novel here. 108 megapixel camera. We have F1.8 on that camera. Also a periscope 48 megapixel. Wow, 103 millimeter telephoto. In addition to that, a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 0.3 TOF sensor. Like, wow, this is just, just wow. That, that should explain it all. There's a lot going on here. On the front, we do have a pretty simple 40 megapixel camera that can do 4K 60 on the front. So yes, we are talking 
great specifications, also 8K video recording. Now the issue with this at first was that it couldn't really lock in the focus, but they kind of fixed it with that update. So you can kind of see as I'm bringing the S10e in, it can lock in the focus. Now I still notice that if you switch to video mode, sometimes the focus is a little bit off. And honestly, Samsung switching to this whole phase detection autofocus and just putting it on a flagship phone right now when it when it's like their first attempt in a while, they've been doing dual pixel autofocus is working, I think was a mistake. I would have much preferred to have the dual pixel AF on this camera. But at the same time, it does when you get do lock it in, you get incredible results on this phone. Now also, not only that, if you do go over here to the bottom, you can see there's features everywhere. You got that ultra wide, you got that telephoto, you can go up to 100x zoom. I mean, this thing is packing the heat when it comes to the photography on here, pro modes, panoramic modes. And the results to me on here turn out fantastic if you get it in focus. Over here, food, live focus, pro video, super slow-mo, slow motion, hyperlapse. They got the stuff here. And up here, you do have your typical Samsung features on board. If we go into settings, a lot to talk about here as well. I mean, you could change, you can change out things like the you know rear video size up to 8K video, 4K at 60. Here's my overall results though from this phone. I'm gonna show you a couple samples in a minute, but my overall opinion on the results are that you get good background blur with the 100 megapixel enabled. It just gives you, and with the F1.8, it's a good background blur without even needing live focus. Second thing I notice about this phone is that you kinda gotta tap it a few times to get things to lock down. Now, Samsung's gonna be improving this, but the results that come out of here are extremely sharp. However, I don't think they're great. This is not a great consumer camera compared to like the S20 or S20 Plus because it just takes a little more work. And I think that if you're willing to put that work in and do the pro mode and do the pro video, this is a phone that's gonna be better on a tripod for professionals. But even then, why would you want to you know mess around with all of that? It's just not the snappiest to lock things in focus. Go ahead and take a look at some of my photos and let me know your thoughts on this camera. And on the selfie camera, Samsung also decided to go with a non-dual pixel camera. So 
you know, it's just not going to be as quick to focus. It's still phase detection autofocus here on the front. I find this one to not have really major focus issues, but when you bring things in to the frame, it kind of struggles to get stuff. So if you want to do those shots where you're like trying to show something really close, it kind of struggles to get that thing locked in sometimes. So overall, the selfie camera still very good. You can back out 40 megapixels, very good resolution. It can do, you know, 4K at 60 on the front, but I still think the one on the S20, the smaller version, even on the front is better than the one on the S20 Ultra. All right, discussing phone call quality and connections. Now, 5G on board, yeah, that's gonna be really separating this phone from other devices, but the phone call quality itself has been pretty phenomenal. Good reception across the board, good overall you know, speaker performance when you do have a speakerphone on due to the loud audio, and very good overall earpiece performance as well. Everyone can hear me clearly on this phone. This is a great phone for this aspect. I've actually loved this phone for this. And yes, the 5G speeds on here are actually like twice as fast as LTE, even with the T-Mobile that I tested it on. I can only imagine when you get on like the Verizon network and you get that 400 megabytes per second. That's insane. So yeah, connections, phone calls, thumbs up here. So let me just talk about a couple pros and cons I didn't discuss about this phone. The ability to just put a USB-C in there, go DeX to your laptop, DeX to a monitor, that is an amazing feature for this phone. One of the cons of this phone, I think for $1,400, and having you know 128 gigabytes of storage for 1400 I think is a terrible value, Samsung. 256 gigs minimum at 1400 like are you serious? I know we have to buy an SD card separate and we can make a lot more, but $1,400 for 128 gig, I'm not buying it. It's not acceptable. We need to get more at that price point. So that leads me to my conclusion of this phone. This phone I think is a pass for a lot of consumers. Like everyday people are not gonna need all the specs that this phone offers. I think if you're, you know, super into specs, you're gonna love this phone. Um, I think if you're into results, you know, you think in this camera because of the spec sheet is gonna be amazing. I think you're gonna be a little disappointed by how it doesn't just snap a picture and always locks in the focus all the time. Even with the update, it's still not as good as the S20 in terms of the, you know, autofocus. Again, this is an earlier review. This could improve on future updates with Samsung, and I actually expect them to improve it. But as of now, it's unanimously across the internet. Most people are agreeing that this one is not the best pick if you just want a simple to everyday use consumer camera on a phone. And so for me, I think unless you're just really into the big beast phones with all the specs, this one's a pass for me. However, however, if you're geeky like me and you really just love having the best specs on a phone and the latest and greatest thing, you'll be able to overlook some of those little you know annoyances with the camera focus stuff. You'll be fine. You'll love the battery life. You'll love this big, crazy 120 hertz monster display that's super smooth. You love watching movies and media. You'll love this phone. I think for $1,400, this one has got all the stuff you would expect. But as much as I keep repeating myself, the camera, if the camera would have produced better results right out the box, you know, with the focusing stuff and, you know, it's almost unusable sometimes in video, this phone would have been perfect. So let me know your thoughts on the Galaxy S20 Ultra. That's my final review on this for now. I will update this review if Samsung does improve on these things I was talking about in this video. I'm not gonna just sit here and say this is a final review forever. We'll talk about this phone down the line, but this is it for now on the S20 Ultra. Let me know your thoughts on it. Are you picking one up? Did you already, did you return it? What is your story? Do you not care? Is this way out of your league? You're like, I don't buy them things. I buy $400 phones. I just like watching these videos, though. Thumbs up. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Stay safe out there and peace.